call the member for Fadden. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. We rise to provide comment on the Coalition's very sensible second amendment to the Parliamentary Budget Office Bill, a bill that once again the government is asking us to take them on faith. I think all gathered here agree that we are sick and tired of taking this government on faith. We took them on faith on school computers, still not delivered. We took them on faith on overpriced school halls to find that state schools were ripped off to the tune of 60 per cent of the value of private schools. We took them on faith on green loans. We are taking them on faith on the solar rebates, which is an unmitigated disaster. We took them on faith on pink bats. We took them on faith of live cattle exports. And the list goes on of where we have taken these people on faith. The Coalition has asked numerous questions this evening from the emasculated member opposite who refuses to answer even the most simplest of questions. So I simply say to the Parliamentary Secretary, the good Commander Bradbury of HMAS Sinking, uh, there is time for you to outline exactly the requirements of this highly secretive MOU that the government is putting forward. The member for Wentworth outlined a perfectly good parliamentary budget office uh, in 2007-2008, an opportunity for, post for, for costings to be properly understood. It was built on the back of the Charter of Budget Honesty, as we all know, came in when the Howard government came in, uh, because the then leader or the then uh, finance minister actually stood publicly and said that the budget was in the black, that the finances were under control, and the Howard government came in to find the level of astonishing duplicity resulting in a black hole of something like eight or nine billion dollars in Commonwealth finances, hence the Charter of Budget Honesty came in. And yet in 2007, when this government came to power, when it's putting forward its policy costing to the Treasury, 130 of its over 160 policies were put in for costing on the last possible day imaginable Treasury threw up their hands. Don't listen to what these people over here say. Watch what they do, because the duplicity they showed when coming to office in 2007, they had no intention of having their policies costed. They put them all through in the last day. That's how I remember your government coming to power, Parliamentary Secretary. That's how I remember you treating with contempt the Charter of Budget Honesty. Now, you come into this place. With a, Patton, a I'll remind him that noted, do oh, no, I withdraw and, and admonished, Mr Deputy Speaker. The Parliamentary Secretary, Commander Bradbury, comes into this place no. with the Parliamentary no, Budget for, Office. I withdraw, uh, no, I, I no. withdraw, Mr Deputy Speaker. The Parliamentary Secretary, Member for Lindsay, comes in supporting a Parliamentary Budget Office, even though, even though in 2007, on, on coming to the Treasury benches, they couldn't fulfil the requirements of the Charter of Budget Honesty, and here they are laying down a range of issues with respect to the Parliamentary Budget Office that severely constrains the powers of that office, that requires the PBO staff to go and have secret MOUs with a whole range of government departments. So the question is for the government, how hard is it to be open, honest, accountable and transparent. I know you won office in terms of duplicity. I know you won 2010 because of gross duplicity. I know you Member won the last Fadden, election because the Prime ring. Minister stood there and said there would be no carbon tax under the government I lead. Now is the opportunity for you, sir, to come clean with this government. Or, or to come clean. Fadden, the Mem Member the House is the budget. No. Uh, uh, office bill, uh, not uh, any other legislation that might be before the House. The <laughs> <laughs> Member Thrusby will, re <laughs> will resume his seat. There's no point of order. We're talking about the budget bills, and in the budget there are money matters of wide ranging. Thank you, Mr. I call the Member we're, for Fadden. I remind him also the to, to, to direct his comments elections. through the chair. And not at the chair. Well, Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. We'll find out tomorrow when the amendment to the immigration comes in, and the convener of the left, the member for Throsby, let's see how aligned he is with his values and principles tomorrow. We'll see, sir, how relevant you are tomorrow, the member for Throsby is tomorrow, when those bills come in. But right now, in terms of this amendment, this is simply saying that the coalition's the amendments relating. Will resume his seat.